Rhythm. In the first place, uh, it allows you to create UIs that are always interesting and engaging for the user. And uh, it's not that easy to create rhythm in a website because uh, you need a lot of practice uh, and time. But what doesn't in design? Anyway, a good rhythm also makes your website look way more professional. And to achieve it, you just need to repeat some design principles over and over and over throughout your entire design. I have a box right here. And if I show that to you, I bet that the first thing that you've noticed was the image and then the two titles, probably one or the other. It was not the best example of hierarchy, but whatever. We talk about hierarchy and it's extremely important in every single kind of design uh, and you can achieve it in many different ways. Uh, font sizes uh, with visual weight, uh, contrast, uh, scale, uh, images, uh, a lot of other ways, uh, but the fundamental concept is that you can guide the user attention throughout your design and your composition. And if consistently used, uh, you can create a really nice rhythm into your UI. And I have a beautiful idea. Let's create a small website together so we can see all the principles that you need to know to create a rhythm into your website applied step by step. We want to create a website for a fashion brand with an editorial and minimal style. These are the images of the brand and this is the color palette. At the moment there is almost no contrast and hierarchy because yes, we have some call to actions for the navbar, we have this small text and an image that almost fades and blends in with the background color. First I see that I have a really dark color in the color palette and I want to use it in the background because in that way I create more contrast with the image and let's say that I want to of course so change the color of the text otherwise we see nothing and just by changing the way that we use the color palette it allows us to create way more contrast and now as the user land on the page the first thing that he sees is the image so we have already created some kind of hierarchy another thing that we can do is we can change the image and use this one that has a really bright color in the background and this is the name of the brand but right now as you can see it's kind of blending with the other call to actions in the navbar and it's kind of hidden by the image because the image is going to take all the focus and attention of the user. So what we can do here is we can increase the font size, maybe something really big, way better, and we can change the color just to make it pop even more. And if you stop right there, it's completely perfect. You don't have any issues with that, but I want to push it even further, changing the font to add more details to the entire composition and to create more contrast. For fashion brands, I usually prefer to use big, bold, serif type faces. It all depends on the style of the brand, of course, but I think that in this case, it perfectly works. At this point uh, we've created a lot of contrast with the background because uh, this uh, really pops out uh, from the background, the image is the same. Another thing that we can add is maybe the slogan of the website. Due to the fact that the hero section is mainly developed in the center of the screen, I think that is a good idea to put the text on top of the image and center aligned. One thing that we need to think about is that of course uh, the fashion brand uh, in the future want to change the, back the image uh, and uh, we need to think about the contrast with the text. So maybe something that we can add is a rectangle below the text just to make sure that the contrast is always going to work. We have finished with contrast and hierarchy and now we move on with spacing. It is super important yet a lot of beginner designers use spacing in, our, in the wrong way or inconsistently throughout the entire design. Now the gap that we have between the big bold text and the image is way too much respective to the, the gap that we have between the bottom of the page and the image which is 16 pixels and I want to use the same spacing that we have at the bottom for the text and the image. Right now everything is more cohesive and it works really well together, it flows very nicely. Another example of consistent spacing would be the gap that I have between the call to actions that I have in the navigation bar, which is the same gap that I've used for the call to actions in the footer. And I've applied the same concept in these small compositions created by the call to action, the paragraph and the image. And let's say that I want to move, for example, the paragraphs by three pixels up and down, and a normal user might not spot the mistake but it can feel that there is no rhythm and something is actually off. In this case, I want to center align the paragraphs between the images and the call to actions in every single one of these compositions. So everything is consistent and I use the same pattern. A small tip, be careful when you want to surround images with text because you want to keep the vertical pattern the same that the horizontal one. To see that, let's move the title a little bit on the left and as you can see, it doesn't look right and the same thing happen if I want to move the title a little bit towards the bottom. So remember this small tip when you want to surround the images with text. Right now let's see how we can bring this style throughout the entire page and how to keep everything consistent. 
it's pretty simple, pretty short, but it allows you to really understand how everything works and how can we keep the same concept and the same style on all the elements that we have in the page. Let's start from the product page and as you can see I kept the big bold title at the top with the same color and the same style, the same typeface. We have the image at the bottom left so we need to encounter this visual weight with more elements on the right side because to balance an image in an asymmetrically balanced design you need to put more elements on the opposite side of the image and I explained that concept in my asymmetrically balanced design tutorial so if you haven't checked it out go watch it because it's super helpful. For the description of the product, I used a smaller font size than the call to actions because uh, like that the user can spot right away what are the more important elements uh, than a simple paragraph. Whether for these buttons uh, and for the press uh, and the buy button, I used the same font size uh, as the call to actions that we have in the navbar. Consistency and rhythm uh, in terms of font size uh, means uh, that you need to use to choose one to three font size different font sizes uh, and use them for the same purpose every single time. For instance here I've used the same font size and the typeface all over the website for the big bold title. I've used the same font size for the more important elements than paragraphs. Even in this call to actions and in the footer, I've used the same font size that I have in the navigation bar. And let's say that these for two elements, I want to use the font size that I have for the paragraph and for the paragraph, the font size that I have in the call to actions. As you can see, this doesn't work and it confuses the user. Font size and font weight allows you to give more importance to different pieces of text. Another super important principle when it comes to creating a website that feels really organized is of course grid systems and it's important to support elements with other elements because otherwise the composition can feel not organized. And you can see that I've applied this principle in this whole section because I wanted to support the links that I have in the footer with the content that I have above and it's super important because it allows you to create a really clear and visible structure in the website. Taking for example this composition you can see that every single element is supported by other elements uh, and sometimes uh, it's okay to break the grid and to break the rhythm uh, just to create uh, more interesting stuff uh, and to focus the user attention to certain points of the composition but usually when you want to create order and rhythm in your website you want to make the user seize the grid system and use the same columns for multiple elements in this example if i move this block of text uh, two columns before and maybe i move other things around maybe this last block uh, other columns before you can see that it's kind of throw off the the entire composition is not ordered and it doesn't have a clear structure. And that is really important to remember because when you want to create a symmetrically balanced design, it's really easy that you place content in random columns uh, or you want to spread out the content in the page, but it actually breaks uh, the structure of the website, sometimes making the user feel overwhelmed uh, or maybe confused. And of course, we don't want that. The last principle that I want to touch just a little bit is repetition. And it's nothing new, don't go crazy. We have already saw that, for instance, with the big bold title, we have repeated the font size, the style, the, font, the typeface and the color. The same thing for the spacing, we have repeated the patterns and the margins. But basically creating a design system allows you to have a really strong base to create a website that feels organized and flawless. By the way, I would love to know if you want to dive more deeply into these specific topics that we talked about. If you want, for example, a tutorial about how to create contrast in your website, how to space things in, our, in the right way, let me know in the comments down below. But for today is everything, my friends. Let me uh, take you in a journey. For today is everything, guys. I hope that you found this video helpful because uh, it was a little bit tough for me to make it and to create it. I had some problems on the way. But other than that, I was super happy and pumped to make this video because a lot of you requested it. And let me know in the comments down below if you learned something. Smash the like button if you've liked the video and I'll see you in the next one.